Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here today and for giving me this opportunity to present my work in the framework of the International Renewable Sustainable Energy Conference. Let's start by a brief introduction about myself. My name is Najwa Eraza and I just have my master's degree in materials and applications for photovoltaic energy. So it goes without seeing that PV energy becomes today one of the most promising and ecological sources of renewable energy. In order to increase the efficiency of PV cells, several mechanisms can be interpreted. This work, which was my project's graduation, is part of the thematics. It's related to the investigation of the structural properties of SNO2 coded by potassium dysprosium and potassium samarium synthesized by the co-precipitation method for photon conversion. This presentation will take about 5 minutes, which is structured as follows. The diagram in front of you illustrates the objective. We plan to produce SNO2 powders, which will be characterized by specific methods for future use in PV cells. However, the limits of cell-based performance of silicium are in part due to the poor overlap of the solar spectrum and the absorption spectrum of silicium. One of the keys to increase the yield is to convert part of the solar spectrum to adapt it to the width of the band gap of silicium. In this context, the use of impurities such as rare earth in a host matrix can give rise to luminescent materials covering the entire visible range. In this study, we will focus on samarium and dysprosium. So, in general, in SNO2 doped by dysprosium, the rare earth occupies the SN4 plus site. This substitution makes SN as a fault center in the network by carrying one excess electron. To avoid the generation of vacancies, it is preferable to introduce an alkali metal with the lanthanide. In this case, the introduction of K plus ions was used as a charge compensator. The same principle for SNO2 could be put by potassium and samarium. The diagram in the following figure illustrates the main preparation steps. The chosen method is co-precipitation. So, to determine the structure of the different phases formed during the th thermal treatment, the use of the following characterization techniques remains the most frequent solution. The first one is Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, which is a method of structural analysis. So, the resulting IR spectrum shows the two period bands at 560 and 670 cm-1 associated with vibration extension of SNO and SNOSN. The second one is X-ray diffraction. So, as you can see, all the doped powders show a slight shift in the position of the peaks with respect to the pure SNO2. This is particularly due to the low doping rates. The most intense peaks are the lines corresponding to the reticular plans 110, 101 and 211 of the tetragonal phase of the retail type of SNO2. The table in front of you shows the lattice parameters calculation using expert high school software and full proof software which were compatible with theoretical values. So to sum up what I've just said SNO2 powders have been successfully synthesized by the co-precipitation method. It favors the small and uniform nanoparticle though, a fast and homogeneous nucleation and crystallization. In order to better understand the study, the use of other techniques of characterization, such as UV visible and photoluminescence, remains the most frequent solution to be able to achieve a comparative study between SNO2 doped by potassium dysprosium and potassium samarium. I'm coming to the end of my presentation. I hope this has been informative and would like to thank you all for your attention.